Are you getting tired yet of these two playing against each other? Because I've been casting them over and over and over again. But at the same time, they've been showing us some of the most entertaining games of StarCraft 2 I've ever seen. So I'm going to keep casting them. As long as these replays are around, as long as they keep facing off against each other, I'm going to keep casting them. So spotting right here in the top right hand corner on Dynasty of all maps. Playing with the little polar bear on the main command center, we have StarCraft 2's latest and greatest world champion. We're looking at none other than Clem's main command center. His opponent and rival, playing right here with the blue zerg pieces in the opposite corner of the map, we're looking at Raynor's main base. Raynor, ooh, already going for a very fast gold base here on the quote-unquote wrong side of the minerals. Now, that being said, every single time I see this map as of late, it seems like everybody is going for the, the base on this side, on the quote-unquote wrong side. It's become very popular as of late. This is a series they played during the World Team League, which is why it's a best of two series. In the Team League, it's most important that you get the map score as a team rather than the individual match results. So that does mean that we get two maps and it may very well end in a 1-1 one -one or a 2-0, to zero, I guess, but we will have to find out together. Now, Clem, of course, I mean, he's going to be pretty happy that Dynasty is the first game that they played here because Dynasty is considered to be a very good map for Terran. That being said, because of that, a lot of the Zerg players and Protoss players and everybody alike, uh, they've been going for a lot of crazy build orders to try and make up for it. And I find the, the games on Dynasty very exciting to watch. They're always an absolute blast, but at the same time, they are really fun to watch because it is such a good map for Terran across the board. It is very easy for Terran to play a straight up macro game and just simply win. So the opponents have to do something funky. Now he doesn't quite see... No, he saw the tail end of one of those drones, okay. I was gonna say, I don't think he quite sees it, but at this point, you should already have figured out exactly what is going on here. You will see the timing of the gases, which will indicate to him that it's a 15-15, and you will know exactly when he should expect any follow-up aggression, because the gas geyser, it's going to be located over here at the gold base as well. This is a rich Vespian gas, meaning that you get twice as much income as a regular gas. Now, we have seen some counterplays to this sort of thing as well, as we have... Ooh, a kill getting... All right. A kill right here on that Reaper. Not bad at all. We have seen some counterplays from Terrans as of late, where they actually start the game off with a proxy right over here, just immediately assuming that the opponent is going to go for the base over on the quote-unquote wrong side of the minerals. Obviously, Clem can now harass this base as well from the right side, or the left side, depending on how you look at it. Anyways... It is a lot of fun to see this map, and we don't get to see it all too often. Now, I'm curious to see what Raynor is going to be using that gas for. He could certainly go for a Ravager all-in, or like a Queen drop, or a quick Knight display. Something along those lines is very, very valuable. We have a couple Zork things, though, making their way straight into the main. Apparently, the depot was, well, probably purposefully lowered. Roach Warren, by the way, coming up. This is a three minute, okay, Roach Warren coming up together with a lair, about a three minute Roach Warren. And he's built, yeah, he's built it right over here at the front. So, I guess this is like a semi wall off, right over at this expansion, so the queens can stand over there, be put on hold position. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. Put him on hold position, make it difficult for the Hellions to drive in. Now, obviously, he still needs to be careful that the Hellions don't just go straight through the main. But this is actually very well protected right now. Units can't go into the main base. Units can't go into the natural expansion over here either. Now it's an Evo Chamber together with a Roach Warren, right? And he's shown this. Oh, he used the, re oh, he used the Reaper Grenade. Let me just back off here for a second. So Raynor thought he had all of his uh, bases covered here. But instead, Brenda decided to make a little jump for joy. As we have the Hellions going straight into the main. And this could actually be a disaster. There is no Zerkling speed. Roaches are coming right now, but they take a whole lot longer to build. And Clem with a very cheeky little play there. Keeping that early game Reaper alive. Yeah, we can transfuse drones all we want. But this is still a tremendous amount of worker kills in favor of the Terran. Gets one more on his way out. 14 drones. 15 now in total after that Reaper secured a kill in the early game. But 14 drones with this push for four Hellions and that Reaper. Absolutely massive. Now, Raynor did decide to go for the quick lair, right? He does now have the opportunity to morph in a Dropper Lord. Nematized Carapace is coming up. That's the Overlord speed upgrade. 
So we're gonna be sending everything we've got, it seems, towards the other side. Now, a queen. Oh. Or sorry, a benchy here. The benchy can be a queen. Yes, queen. Um, she has intercepted a couple of these units that were morphing on the other side of the map. And well, this is a really lovely catch here for Clem. Hmm. Let's see. So three queens inside of the Overlord. This is still not an attack though that will be easy to hold for Clem. Because he did just throw away quite a few units. Those siege tanks have their work cut or their work rather cut out for themselves, because this is a tough one to hold. It takes three corrosive biles to kill a tank, seven or so to kill a bunker. One of the queens is desperately trying to go around. We do not have the cloaking upgrade. Let's see though how this aggression goes down. Queens in the front is quite clever. When they have a little bit of creep to stand on, they can be using their transfusion. And that means, of course, that the queens can stay alive for a long time and survive a lot of those siege tank shots. Ravage is a little bit awkward. He does not quite get the next bile off. And it looks like Clem secures a very nice hold here. That was a little dangerous. But the micro has been pretty much flawless. Great positioning too on those units. Very nicely done. So, Roach Speed on the back of this. Raynor has been making drones again, but if you look at the work accounts right now, it's 32. Well, 33 now, versus 44. After killing all of those workers in the main base, you would imagine that it's more heavily in favor here. Oh, as we have the queens moving onwards. Oh, your command center gets blocked by queens. We're gonna drop a couple of tumors over there too. How often do you see a command center that can't land because of the queens? Sadly here, the little creep trick did not quite work out. I'm always a fan of those. <laughs> but this is a bit of desperation play. Yeah, I love this though. I kind of feel like this is one of those plays we should see a little bit more frequently. Queen's going around the map with one dropper lord, just spreading a bunch of creep. It's very strong, like you can block future expansions for the Terran quite well. It's really just an APM limitation, right? Because this does take a lot of actions. Luckily for us, both of these players have plenty of APM to spare. Now, Clem's worker count is not as amazing, primarily because of the fact that he obviously delayed this base for quite a bit. He does have it now, but this is still a difficult mineral line to mine from. At the same time, Raynor's work account may have been hindered a little bit earlier, but he has been mining this fully rich base. Gets another siege tank over here too. Okay. Roach is going around the site. There's two tanks over here together with the bunkers, but there's really not that many units. In the meantime though, the Metavex, as another siege tank gets biled down, the Metavex are gonna try and put a stop to all of this. It will happen eventually. Did all the Benchies go down? Yeah, the Benchies are gone at this point, which is why those Roaches have free movement all around the map. 58 SCVs right now though. 37 drones. Yeah. The work account here for Clem is looking real nice. Maybe not quite as nice as you could sometimes expect it to be after killing that many workers, but this is still a tremendous advantage. The only problem here for Clem is that he needs to hold on. He needs to hold on for a few more minutes and actually get those resources brought in, right? And actually get the value that he's been looking for this entire time. If you have an eco advantage, but you can't make use of it, I mean, that's obviously suboptimal. He's gonna be able to... So one of the things he's been buying, right, is upgrades. He's gonna go into 2-2 really quickly as well. He should find himself in a pretty good position. I like these siege tank balls a lot, though. How many tanks have gone down now? Four. Not bad at all. My main concern, right, is when this Terran army goes across the map, how in the world is Raynor going to hold it? Because there's a lot of choke points on Dynasty. Like I was trying to say earlier, a lot of long games usually do seem to favor Terran quite a bit. And the early game shenanigans from Raynor has now been held. Meaning that, yeah, it's gonna be up to Clem to now decide the pacing of the rest of this game. A couple roaches are gonna be going back home. He's left a few units behind, but the tanks are positioned in such a way that he can actually hold it. Ravages once again walk within the siege tank range. They will be able to kill some more stuff. Gold base is now running low here for Raynor. Which is a blessing and a curse. Because it means that he can maneuver around his bases a little bit more easily and defend his drop. But obviously it also means that his, well, income boost is going to run out. 
He's got a massive army, though. If you look at the army size, yeah, he is still going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Terran player. If you look at the income, there's peaks and valleys, mostly whenever those roaches, well, go to town on the mineral line or whenever the mules are mining. Ultimately, this is an army here from the Zerg that's just roaches and ravagers. He's going into armor upgrades, which is nice and all, but in about a minute time, Terran is going to hit 2-2 on the bio. And I think that that is going to be incredibly difficult for Raynor to hold. He does not have a transition out of this, he does not have attacking upgrades, he does not have a hive. It's just Roach Ravager. So this is very much so a desperation play. And it seems like the Marines are already starting to overpower him. There's a big medevac drop on the other side of the map just trying to be annoying. The income advantage right now for Clem has really kicked in. Even a landed Viking is going to be joining in the fray. Clem could have probably gone for a triple command center all in, but he's decided to not really take any risks. Goes for the command center here in the middle of the map too. Is there enough for the Roach army to overwhelm this? If the planetary fortress finishes up, this base is never going to be killed. It looks like Clem does indeed hold it. This is before his big power spike. 2-2 just about to kick in. Obviously, a lot of those engagements are also without the majority of his siege tanks. Now the planetary is done, another tank will fall. But I think with this expansion being secured, it secures the win here for Clem. He's not going to be able to go across the map with his entire army if he wants to. And this army is going to be pretty much impossible for Raynor to hold. It's all about getting into the right position though, and that can still be difficult. A very mobile Terran army. But the Zerk army can also catch you off guard if you're not careful. The thing is, there's no there's no opportunity here for Rainer to go into Vipers, right? Or Infestors, or say for example, Lurkers. Any of that would be amazing. But the man can barely afford Evo Chamber upgrades. He's only gone for one of those at a time. And that just means that while you are winning some of these battles, you're ultimately losing the war. There's no reason for Clem not to play this slow, right? He doesn't really need to be aggressive. But yeah, Raynor now realizes where this game was going. I'm sure he has been realizing it ever since the Hellions drove into the main base. He's forced to tap out in game number one. Lovely place right there from Clem. Managed to get the value early on. And it forced Raynor into a position that he wanted to afford, or he wanted to avoid rather. Very, very desperately. The Polar Bear, man, for good luck. Now we once more find ourselves on Crimson Court. Another map that's not bad for Terran. Bit of a theme. Most of the maps are pretty good for Terran in the current map pool. Win-loss ratio on this map. Oof, for the Terran versus Zerg matchup is 67% in favor of Terran. For Dynasty... Let me see. Dynasty right now, as of me recording this, 66.7%. So basically, both of the maps we're seeing today have a, well, two out of three <laughs> wins for Terran at the tournament level. Bundled with that, of course, is that Clem is the current world champion. I would say he's currently the best Terran player in the world. This is a tough one for Raynor again. I think he had a good thing going for himself, though. Imagine if in that previous game, he wouldn't have lost 14 drones, right? Now, obviously, that is a lot of drones to lose, and he did kill some of the Hellions, so I guess that made his follow-up attack a little bit stronger, maybe. He had something cool going on there, but Clem immediately snuffed that one out, and he, well, right away managed to get rid of it. Interesting, though, to see this map. Because, if I'm not mistaken, the WTL uses a loser's pick for the next map. So, if you end up losing game number one in the best of two, you get to decide what map you play on in game number... Or, sorry, if you lose map number one, you get to decide what map you play on in game number two. Obviously, well, Rainer and Klim are both... Uh, they can be quite the memester, right? They can be a bit of a... Uh, bit of a clown every once in a while. And of course, these two, they play against each other all the time, so they know the opponent inside and out. But it is curious to see this as the second map. Makes you wonder if maybe he's got something prepared. One thing that surprises me a little bit here from Klim 
is that he's decided to go for the single Rex opener. The main problem you run into on this map from Zerg players, when you do play Terran, is the quick forward base into the quick rich Vespian Gas Geyser, which opens up some really powerful timing attacks. We've seen them a lot during the World Championships. There were a lot of Ravager all-ins, a lot of Queen drops, all based around this rich Vespian Gas Geyser. And it seems that the best way to counter it is to go for a double barracks opener on the low ground, make three Reapers, and simply try to delay this base for as long as possible. Now, Raynor could have taken that forward base if he wanted to, but instead he's already gone for the expansion here on the right side. So, curious to see this decision here. Every single game that I've seen Clem play as of late on this map, he goes for a double Rex opener. I think it's the best build to go for against Zerk on this map for Terran regardless. But apparently this time around we're playing some bluffs. It may very well have to be because of the loser's map pick though, right? So obviously Clem knows that this map is good for Terran. Raynor obviously knows that as well. So if Raynor is picking this map as a second game against Clem, he's probably got something weird prepared. So what are the odds that he's actually just gonna go for the quote-unquote normal aggression? We have a Roach Warren, building at about three and a half minutes in the back of the main base. A third base here in the vertical position. And a lot of Zerklings being made. Now there's no extra gas. Rainer has been mining quite a bit of gas here, I suppose, but it's not like he's made a lot of additional gas geysers to go for like a Ravager all-in or something along those lines. Ooh, really? I saw a little blue dot on the minimap earlier. Rainer is opening up the back door. Now, this is a backdoor into the third base of Terran, though. This is not like it's a, a sneaky path straight into the opponent's main. I don't really know exactly what he's cooking up, but he's doing something. Ravagers are probably going to be coming in the future, too. For now, it's going to be seven roaches. What if Clem just, yeah, doesn't land the base on the low ground right now? So there is a moment, of course, that's coming up very soon where Terran will secure the expansion. If Clem decides to fly the base over here, or even into the middle of the map, it's gonna be very easy for him to hold on. Zerklings are going around the site. This is right when the Hellions are moving out. I believe Raynor has seen this with the Overlord. Okay, we have the Lynx flooding in. So this was the build? This is why we decided to go on this map? Crisis management here from Clem is amazing. Well, I mean, he's still losing a lot of SCVs, though. Yeah, this is actually a lot of SCVs going down. Obviously, that was a costly amount of links, too, but now come the Roaches. The Roaches are not taking the uh, the very long way around the map. They're gonna go... My god, this actually worked. <laughs> this actually worked. This is gonna be one of the dumbest builds I've seen in a while, but it actually worked. <laughs> So basically, right, the only way this worked, let me let me just back off for a second. The reason this worked is because the Hellions decided to move out. If Clem would have sat at home, he would have held this just fine. So Raynor sees this with the Overlord. He's pretending that this Overlord is mispositioned, by the way, because normally it goes on this pillar. But he wanted to be in such a location that he knew exactly what was going on. Hellions are caught with their pens down, and that means that the Zerklings can run in. Ay, 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 okay. We were at about 5 minutes and 45 seconds. Right after Terran just lost, well, most of their natural economy. That is one hell of a, one hell of a play right there from Rainer. You gotta know the opponent very well. This is actually sometimes something that can bother the top level players a little bit. Where they have so much APM and they're so good at executing their early game on autopilot that they're almost a little bit bored. And because of that boredom, you start going around the map with units just because you can? I don't know if that makes any sense, but there's this weird APM flex that sometimes happens when you are too good at the game, I suppose. Where you're like, ah, I don't really need to worry about microing at home, and I don't really need to be worrying about controlling my stuff. I may as well go ahead and, yeah, micro my Hellions on the opponent's side of the map. That's exactly what Rainer played into. It's one of those builds where, like, your average Diamond League Terran probably would have had an easier time defending against Raynor's push than literally the highest ranked Terran player in the world. Because <laughs> the build order you can execute to a T. All you need to do is just keep the Hellions on the ramp. 
Just don't be as good at multitasking, and you would be able to hold that attack just fine. Anyways, because of that drama, though, we did have Clem going into a third Banshee. Banshee so far, mostly just denying mining time. One of them just, well, fell over here. Somewhere in the forest, up north of uh, Rainer's Main. The Zerkling's still going around. <laughs> he shows the attack path. Clem, by the way, hasn't figured out yet where that attack came from, and now he will know. <laughs> Such a weird play. This is one of those moments where you're like, that son of a... <laughs> <laughs> he, he sent drones to my side of the map. I don't even know if he picked up on it, to be honest. It looks like, at a, at a first glance at least, that this mineral wall is where it's supposed to be. Alright, anyways. Clem still has a good amount of units. And getting a kill on a base would be a very nice beginning of a potential comeback. There you go. Forces to cancel. That is the fourth base from Raynor. He's going to immediately restart it again in that location. Last time, by the way, that we saw these two play on this map, it ended up with a very epic... Raynor went for like a, a two-base opener, right? It ended up with a very epic Mass Muta style. Maybe that's what Clem also expected on this map again. Because that Mass Muta series was played before this one. Maybe that's why, actually. Maybe that's why he decided to open up in the way that he did. That's gotta be it, actually. Yeah, that's why you went for a 1-1-1 rather than a 2-1-1 um, a opener. Because the 2-1-1 opener is not very good at all against a Muta start with a 2-base Zerk, because you delay a 3rd base that Zerk wasn't planning on going for anyways. That's gotta be it! That's gotta be it. Yeah, that's why I decided to not go for the low ground double Rex opener. Alright, anyways, Raynor following this up very differently this time around. It's 1-1, into a Hive, Hydra Den. We're gonna go into a little bit of Lurker play. The two Banshees that are left over have joint hands, or rotors. And they, well, will have to run away immediately. I don't mind this position too much though for Klim. It's still a good map. He still has the second, yeah, factory finishing up, goes into the fourth base. Economically, he's caught up just fine. Honestly, Canceling that, uh, forcing the cancel on that fourth base may have actually put Klim just, yeah, back in his game just fine. I mean, it's still not a comfortable position. Upgrades-wise, he's a little bit behind where he wants to be. Obviously, tech-wise, he isn't quite up to ghosts yet. I'm sure ghosts will be hitting the battlefield momentarily. There is going to be that sketchy moment, though, where Zerg will have lurkers out, but Terran won't yet have ghosts. We've seen many, many times that lurkers can sometimes just straight up win the game. Big Zerkling, yeah, surround it seems. Trying to get all of the siege tanks. Bit of a slow response right there from Clem. He had vision of it, but he didn't quite know. Decides to protect this to the best of his abilities. You know what? He may just be able to win the fight. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, these are 1 1 Marines going up against 1 1 Roaches. Man with gun, pretty good. Here's the Benchies joining in as well. There's no detection anymore because the Overseers got sniped down. New Overseer will be joining the fray in just a moment. This is actually a fight, though, that may just decide the game. If Clem can somehow, some way, get his reinforcements to kill that base, I think he actually seals the deal. It's difficult for the Roach player here to counterattack. Siege tanks are coming up two at a time. Now, he did move every single one of his tanks across the map, but... In the meantime, we have a planetary fortress morphing in the middle of the map. Barracks 6, 7, and 8 are, are coming up right now. We've got ourselves the plus one researching for the tanks. Gonna make them deal a little bit more damage. Raynor did just now secure the rich Vespian gas, which is exactly what Clem is trying to deny here. Raynor forced to take this engagement off creep. Normally a fight you would be avoiding, but because Terran can deny that rich gas from that low ground expansion, or from that low ground position rather, it is critical for Raynor to yeah, move down there. We'd love to see the creep push forward in this direction, but nice little skirmish. Lurker range just about to finish up. Vipers are coming up as well. Plus two finished here for the Terran. 
Does he have a Ghost Academy yet? Yes, he does. We need to be seeing Ghosts very soon in order to counter both the Vipers as well as the Lurkers. There they are. Rain are currently gas starved, which is why this base is so critical. One medevac. That's all Clem is ready to prepare, or, or prepared rather, to send across the map right now. He wants to delay the Zerg push for as long as possible. He's just finished the extra tech labs right here on the newly made barracks. So you usually end up with four barracks that have tech labs and then four of them that have reactors. Just like this. Actually, yeah, yeah, no, I can't count. That's a, a factory. I thought for a second there was a fifth one. But no, that's a factory right over there, and that's when the ghost will be coming up. So this is a tiny little timing window here for Raynor, where he is able to hit his opponent in the face with lurkers that are upgraded against the Terran that doesn't yet have ghosts. And that's exactly what Clem is trying to delay. That's why he's going around the map here with two Metavex. Three Metavex, actually. It's not even really an attack that's meant to deal damage. It's just meant to keep the Zerg player at home. Brilliant little push here from Clem. Despite the weird opener and all of the varieties here, he still has a very good understanding of where Zerg is currently at and what he needs to be worried about. Here come the Lurkers, together with the Vipers. Question is, does Terran have enough to defend this right now? EMP? Good EMP. Only one blinding cloud goes down. We have enough energy for a abduction, fair enough. This is still very sketchy though for the Terran. Currently 30 supply behind. Looks like the push at the front has been held. Maybe this orbital has to be lifted off. Yeah, I think it needs to be lifted off. As long as the SCVs mostly live, it should be okay. Raynor wants to continue this aggression with four additional lurkers. And this is all a result from that early game decision from Raynor. That Ling run by really slowed Clem down. It's only about a 30 second delay or so, but you can see here that it's very effective. If Clem would have been given another 30 seconds, this, this base would have never lifted off. Still though, how do you continue this push right now as Raynor? The Vipers have to go back home to accumulate energy. They will be back for more in just a moment. Couple of snipes going down. Couple of ghosts going down as well though. Ultimately, this is a fight, of course, that the ghost will win in the long run. Raynor is, however, just buying a lot of time. He will see here that this expansion hasn't been taken yet. A little awkward, because those roaches would love to run into the natural expansion. Big marine counterattack. The marines are useless when it comes to fighting the lurkers. So we may as well just, yeah, send them across. In the meantime, though, Clem is struggling here against that base. Again, or with that base, rather, against these lurkers. Vipers out of energy again, EMP'd, battered and bruised, they will go back home. They'll probably get a nice little transfusion from the Queens. Roaches are gonna go after the rocks, planetary in the middle though, will be difficult for them to break. Now we have a drop alert coming up, three of them. Raynor looking to continue the aggression, but... Whew. This is a little difficult. A little bit difficult for the Zerg. Clem is really just trying to stabilize. And keep in mind that Clem is pretty much never put into a position where he's all in. Like, he doesn't play that eight barracks, triple command center style. He is mass expending whenever he can. And honestly, I'm trying to think, when's the last time I've seen Clem lose a straight up game of StarCraft 2? Like, this is a straight up game right here. Maybe a bit of a cheeky push here from Raynor, but strategically, at least, this is relatively normal, right? We've seen some games that, well, Raynor won against Clem, but that's because Raynor decided to go for strategies that are a little bit off the beaten path. This is mostly a normal game, and I don't think I've really seen Clem lose any games <laughs> where he gets to play a normal game. This has been a very complex game, though, for the Terran player, don't get me wrong. Reading the position in a situation like this is super tough. Now, here go the Overlords. We have a little lurker surprise. There is, however, a sensor tower set up and there's already a missile turret next to it too. Clem will now see the little dots on the minimap. He's already sending units on over in this direction. It's getting too hot. We do have the Zerg player advancing in the middle of the map once more. Lurkers in the main base, mostly the knight. Obviously the missile turret is also a detector, but he's got plenty of scans available at this point in time. And Clem cleans up the drop 
whilst also managing the push here in the middle of the map. This is starting to feel very desperate. For the Zerg, that is. Clem is expanding, right? He's making more bases. Additional orbitals are coming up. We don't even have the Liberator transition yet, and that is obviously the next step in the master plan of the Terran. This isn't even his final form. Like, this is like Super Saiyan 4 over here, okay? Clem is still gonna go up. Whereas for Raynar, his army doesn't get much better. All the other units that he can make get countered by the Ghost, and Clem will be more than happy to make the, more of them. Personal cloaking coming up. Plus three for the siege tanks is building. Now the lurkers once again used in multiple combinations here, multiple groups of them. He is catching the Terran off guard a little bit, but none of it is dealing critical damage. By the way, that opening that the Zerklings used, <laughs> it's been plugged with a supply depot. Yeah, I think Clem is actually still doing this. My god, the guy is such a monster. Honestly, the only time I ever see Clem lose is, is, is when he's playing against a strategy that he hasn't seen. Right, so the Muta builds... Oh, the Muta builds are... Something he hasn't played against very much. So, yeah, he's clearly in need of a little bit more practice in that department. But other than that, Clem looks pretty much unstoppable in this matchup. The way that he maneuvered around both of these games, the way that he transitioned into a quote-unquote regular mid-game after the weird early games, right? So most of the time it seems like the top-level Terrans right now, like for example Maru and Cure and Bjorn, right? They struggle when Zerg goes for an early game that throws them off, right? That throws them into a position that they haven't really seen before. But it seems like Clem, despite being thrown in those situations, the strategies, right, the Zerg players are going for, they're, they're pushing him into a direction that he is not really prepared to play. He still knows the exact position of the game, because, yeah, he transitions at the perfect time, he de delays the Zerg players the perfect amount. It's, it's, yeah, it doesn't get much better than this. Very well done by Clem.